now, star of the Broadway smash, don't blame me, I just cook here, Chef Taco. Hello, I'm Taco the Octopus, and tonight I'll be cooking your dinner. Today on Deep Fried Live, we're going to get back to basics by making the perfect steak. There's really no reason why you shouldn't have restaurant-quality steak at home, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Nothing fancy, just one beautiful, juicy piece of beef. <sighs> Cooked to perfection. The first thing you're going to need is, of course, a steak. Since our ingredient list only includes meat, salt, pepper, and a little oil, it's wise to start with a quality steak. There are, of course, some good online resources, which... Uh... This can't be good. Hello? Uh, anybody there? Do not be alarmed, Earth Creature. I mean you no harm. What do you want? You are here because I am in need of your assistance. Uh, <laughs> okay. And where is here, exactly? You are on the Gregorian warship, the Gixblar Gublak. The what now? The Geeks Blargublak. Roughly translated, it means horribly violent massage in your earth speak. <laughs> of course it does. And what is it you need my help with? Um, a back rub, perhaps? No. I need you to show me how to cook an earth cow. Eh? Oh. You're... you're a cook? Actually, I'm a probe technician. I got reassigned after Captain Boole ate the cook. Ate the cook? Oh, he put too much garlic in the captain's toilet stew, so he just had to go. My name is Fleeb. Look, Fleeb, I may not be your best choice here. I tend to be a little accident-prone when I cook. I can give you the number of the food channel. Nah, I tried those guys. They all wanted assistants and stylists and PR people. Got kind of crowded in here. Uh, yeah, I need a stylist. All right, I'll help you with your earth cow. What seems to be the problem? You know, I'm not sure. They just turn out bad. Here, I took some pictures. Yiga! What, what did you do to these? Th th these are cows, right? Yes, I, I think so. They mooed. And then I probed them. Probed them? That is so wrong, Fleeb. But it has a grill setting, see, right here. Right, um, let's start over, shall we? <laughs> Where's the beef? Maybe something a little less lively, perhaps? You lost me. Okay, look. The earth cow, or more specifically a steer, is best served up in pieces, not all at once. Oh, I see. There are over 300 commercial cuts of beef. Factors such as taste, texture, cooking method, time, and budget will determine what piece of meat is best for your situation. Fast is good and rare. Very rare. Okay, well, since we're trying to impress the boss, I'd suggest a filet. It's really the gourmet cut of the steer, and it's fast and well-suited for a minimum of cooking. Now, where's that cow? Oh, hey, you learned fast. Yes, and earth cows are soft. Oh, let's not go there. Okay, this one looks nice. A little marbling, but not too much. A nice even cut, and no strong odor. When you select your meat, make sure it's got a bright red color, not brown, and go for something that's moist looking, but not waiting in a pool of blood. Mmm, sounds yummy. Right, um, you're probably going to want to put the rest of those in the freezer, unless you're planning on cooking them in the next few days. So, how to cook it? Well, you can grill it, indoors or out, which will give you those spiffy grill marks, or you can broil it, also a popular method. But for the best possible flavor and finish, inside and out, there's really only one way to go. Cast iron. If you don't have one of these, go get one. Now. It's cheap. It's nearly indestructible. Frankly, it's a joy to cook with. You'll need to season it now and again, but if you treat it more like a cast iron pet than a pan, you'll have an excellent cooking companion until at least the next ice age. March 11, 2037. Anyway, toss it into an oven preheated to 500 degrees and let it get hot. About 10 minutes. Now, I'm guessing your captain likes his meat cooked rare. Oh, definitely rare. Very, very rare. That's good, because I don't like to cook it any other way. 
To get your steak ready to cook, bring it to room temperature, then sprinkle both sides with kosher salt and black pepper, and then rub them in. Now add a little canola or avocado oil, something with a high smoke point, and give it a few minutes for everything to soak in. Why don't we just put the oil in the pan? The pan's too hot. By putting it on the meat, we get good heat conduction without the third degree splatter burns. Oh, what about adding some other spices? Uh, no. Barbecue sauce? No. Surely a little blue glebe salsa wouldn't hurt. Okay, I don't know what that is, but no! Fleeb! How's dinner coming, Fleeb? Uh, fine, sir. No mishaps, I hope. Uh, none, none, sir. Mmm. Dinner still has a little fight left in it, eh? Just the way I like it. Keep off the good work, Fleeb, so I don't have to eat you. What, what did you do that for? Well, you're not supposed to be here. If they find you, they'll dissect you, or worse. Right. Uh, our pan should be hot enough, so slap it onto a burner turned to the highest setting. Be sure to wear the thickest pot holders or welding gloves you've got, as the pan will be very hot. Now drop your steak onto a pan and don't touch it until a nice crust forms in about 45-60 seconds. Why? Well, because the crust tastes really good. Why? Uh, the mailyard reactions. It's, it's scientific. After a minute, flip it and wait another minute. So, uh, this being an alien thing, how's that working out for you? Can't complain. Hours are long, but I get to probe a lot of stuff, so that's cool. Okay, I think that's long enough. Uh, flip it again and move it, pan it all, into the 500 degree oven. After two minutes, flip it once more and then wait for it to finish up. How do I know when it's done? I'm glad you asked. Four minutes in the oven should do it for a thick steak to be cooked rare. But there are other ways to check for doneness. A probe thermometer... A probe? An instant read thermometer is great for beginners. Just slide it in from the side and take a reading. 125 degrees sounds about right for rare. If you're going for medium rare, try 135. With a little practice, you'll be able to take a steak's temperature by touch alone. Wow. Four minutes, 125 degrees. Did I mention the captain likes his meat very, very, very rare? You'll need to let this rest for five minutes so the meat can reabsorb the juices. Just place it on a rack and cover loosely with some foil or maybe a bowl. Um, do you have something I can cover this with? Uh, thanks. Um, so five more minutes and your steak will be ready for the captain's table. <laughs> that sure does smell good. What about sauce? If your meat's properly prepped, cooked, and rested, you really don't need a sauce. But if you really want a safety net, try a wild mushroom or maybe, maybe a crumbled blue cheese sauce. Do either of those ooze? Ooze? Uh, well, they, they kind of melt a little. Oh, melting's good. What about sides? Oh, gosh, uh, that's a long list. Uh, um, how about some mashed sweet potatoes and sautéed green beans? How about something with, mm, tentacles? What exactly are you getting at, Fleeb? Ah, delicious, Fleeb. I especially like the Blue Glebe salsa. Thank you, sir. Now, what have you made me for dessert? Earth Creature Surprise! Mmm, looks tasty. What's the surprise? <laughs> oh, phew. oh, thank goodness. It's just a dream. Well, <laughs> that's the last time I drank three root beer flows before bedtime. No more uh, root beer flues before bedtime. So, how do you like your fleeb cooked? 